that is what I would call the standard pattern and that's what I'll be re referring to as the standard pattern because this is the most common pattern in drum and bass. But there are plenty of variations which we're going to have a look at right now. So all we've got to do is move some of these kicks around slightly or some of these snares around slightly and we get a different feel. So currently this is on 1.3.3, so it's bar one, third beat, third position. So we can just move this to 1.2.3, have a listen. So just compare that to the standard pattern. We move this whole beat forward. Nice little variation there, which is also quite common in drum and bass music. Or you can put this to 1.2.4, so that's a 16th later. Now it might sound a bit off timing to you, but that's actually quite common as well. Let's just go back to our standard pattern. We can put a double kick at the end if we want to. So we've got three kicks now. And you would probably reduce the volume on that one just to make it sound a bit more real. Sounds much better. And we can also do a double kick at the beginning. So I'm just gonna copy that over. And obviously we're only on a one bar loop here. So you would vary this in bar one, bar two, bar three, bar four. You'd put some variation in, but I'm just showing you what you can do. So double kick at the end or double kick at the beginning. Let's go all the way back to standard position or standard pattern rather. And we can even just remove the second kick altogether. That's another variation. maybe for a breakdown part of the track. And just moving this over to a two bar pattern, it would work on a four bar as well. You could literally just bring back the second kick on the last phrase. So have a listen to this. And if that was a four bar pattern, obviously this wouldn't come back until the very last bar. So that's just another way to do it. And I think that would sound nice if we had one of those in there as well. Yep, sounds good. And sticking another one in there where we had it before, when we first started this lesson, you get this. Quite nice again. So many different variations. Put one in there, see what happens. That's quite nice. So back to standard pattern and one bar loop. Let's add another kick here. So that's duplicating the kick one whole beat before. And if we go to quantize 16s, we can move this kick one sixteenth to the right. Okay, you may want to just reduce the volume on this one. It's not quite a ghost kick, of course, but it's something with a bit less punch to it. Sounds much, much better than being the same volume as the one that follows just after it. And we can move this third kick 1 16th to the left. And then we can move this one back again for another variation. Or we can have a double beat on the third beat. And just thought of another one. We can just shorten this one off and bring this in to here. And so we were just getting into the realm of ghost kicks there. So let's have a look at ghost kicks. So let's try something like that. Don't forget to bring the volume right down on a ghost kick or perhaps use a different sort of less punchy kick. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Let's put in a couple more. 
Um, just make room for that and we'll put that in there. That sounds pretty good. And we'll put another ghost kick on the end. So a much more sort of energetic feel we've got now. Again, still may want to vary some of these velocities. So you get the idea about ghost kicks. We can do ghost snares as well. Very, very important for this style of music. Go back to the standard pattern. Okay, ghost snares. Again, you may want to select a different snare with less impact, but we'll see what we can do with the one we've got. We'll just duplicate it and we'll put them either side of the third beat. It's going to be something like that, I believe. We may have to change the sample here. Let's have a listen. Yeah, we would probably use a different sample here. Let's just see if we can transpose this. But that's the idea for ghost snares. And we could maybe put another one on the end as well, see what happens. Sounds pretty good. Okay, so that's most of the variations covered with ghost snares as well. So let's have a look at our other elements. I've bounced down the shaker. You can see it's slightly off the grid in places. I already did that before I bounced it down. I varied the velocity and the timing. And we've got some hi-hats here as well in various different places. Do, 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 so a nice little rhythm there. And closed hat. And again, you can put these anywhere you like really, as long as they've got some kind of rhythm to them. And combined with the shaker, which is on a 16th grid. With some kind of 16th rhythm, they work well together. So I'll just solo the shaker and hats. See, these two elements here just add to the rhythm. And so with the ghost kicks in as well, and don't forget, we haven't bothered to go and find the right samples for these yet. We will later. And we're using the same kicks as well for the ghosts. So this could all sound a lot better, and it will. But just to give you the rhythm basics, this is what it might sound like. Cool, so I hope that's been a good introduction to drum and bass. We'll continue these lessons by looking at other genres and then we'll come back and process some of these beats so they're a lot fatter. Okay guys, all the best. Bye bye.